Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. In previous videos, we've occasionally talked about flashing LEDs. The idea of using these came up when I did my video on building a campfire on your model railroad. Also, when I was working on my lift-out bridge, uh, I suggested, and several other people suggested, adding some flashing LEDs on the bridge itself to get people's attention and remind them that it was there. So, that's the project that I'm actually going to work on today. But first, I want to show you what goes on with flashing LEDs, because there is a secret for what is required to get these to actually work with DCC power. So stick around for the video. Before we go on, I want to ask you to hit that little red uh, subscribe button. And when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Now there are a lot of uses for flashing LEDs on a model railroad. Now as I said, I used an LED to create a campfire scene on the Piedmont Southern. And I put a link to that video, and I'll include it at the end of this one as well, for you to take a look at if you want. In that case, I used a different approach. I, I used the fire flicker effect from an old decoder that I had on hand. And it was just easier, simpler to go ahead and use that. Plus, I think it gave a very good effect. You can also use the NCE Light It, which is a, basically a stationary decoder designed to be used with LEDs. And one of the things it has on it is a fluorescent tube flicker effect, so that that should give you a pretty good approximation of a campfire. So that's another, another way to do it. But what I'm going to show you today is how you can use these flashing LEDs. And unfortunately, these really don't flash fast enough to give you the effect of a campfire. But they can be used for other things. For example, on the lift out bridge, as I will show you in a little while, they're going to be a great warning signal for people who are walking along and forget that that bridge is there in place. Hopefully, that and the barricade stripe will get their attention before they end up with a two by four between their eyes. Now, the other thing that these can be used for. You know, you can use these on be as beacons on the top of water towers. You can use them on the tops of radio towers. You can use them on the tops of buildings. I'm sure you can think of a lot of ways that you could use one of these flashing LEDs, be it red, green, blue, white, whatever color, yellow you want to use. There's probably a use you can find for one of these flashing LEDs. So what I want to do now, though, is take you through the process of what it actually takes to make one of these things work with DCC power. With DC, it's one thing, but with DCC, it's completely different. So let me take you through that, and we'll get on with the video. Now, this is the uh, flashing red LED that I've been using, and I got these from allelectronics.com, and I will include a, uh, a part number for these in the description. Uh, you could also get these at just about anybody else that sells electronic components. Now, these are about, a, I think, a five millimeter. I think it's a T one and three quarter. So they're a fairly large one. And I picked it on purpose because I'm going to be using these on my lift out bridge as a warning signal to people not to bump into it and that it's there. So what I wanted to do was to be able to power these off of DCC truck power because I'm not going to run my DC power bus out that far and underneath of a lift out bridge so that I have to add another set of power points in order to get power for DC. So I wanted these to be able to operate off of DCC power. But the first thing I wanted to do is see what kind of effect they have. So I got out my battery holder that has two one and a half volt batteries in it. These are double A's. And let's take a look at how well these light up with three volts. There. So you can see that that thing is, is a nice little flash rate. It's not fast enough for a campfire or something like that, but for a beacon on the top of a water tower or any other type of beacon, it would be fine. Now, it looks like it's white, but it's actually red. I'll tell you that. It's simply because of the lighting here as well as what the uh, camera picks up. So you can see it works very well off of a 3-volt uh, battery setup. So that's a pure 
DC power source. Now, what about on DCC, I'm going to have to be running it at about 13, 14 volts. You can see I've added a resistor to this leg here, and it doesn't matter which leg you add it to, either side will work fine. I'll remind you that the short leg of a LED is negative, the long leg is positive. Also, on the side of the, of the uh, case of the LED, there will be a flat spot molded in, and that flat spot is the negative side. So that's two ways of telling the polarity of an LED, and the polarity has to be correct. Okay, so this resistor here is one I dug out. It's a quarter watt resistor, that's all you need, and it's rated at 810 ohms. I typically will use a uh, 1000 ohms on a lot of my LEDs that are very, very bright, but uh, I wanted something a little bit brighter than that, and not quite as bright as what you might get at a much lower value. So, let's take a look. Uh, first, this is a 9 volt battery in a holder. So we'll give that a test and see how bright it is with 9 volts. So that's pretty, uh, pretty bright there with 9 volts, so with 13 volts, it's going to be even brighter. So again, we've got the, uh, we know that it works with DC power. Uh, we know that this resistor, this dropping resistor, something around 810 is going to be pretty good. So now let's take a look and see what happens when we plug it into a DCC current source. And what I have here is a couple of wires that are hooked up to a DCC booster. And as you'll see, there is no flashing at all. So immediately I was wondering what the heck is going on? Why isn't this flashing LED flashing when I give it DCC power? Well, my first thought was, okay, I know it works on DC battery power. What if I rectify it? And so I pulled out one of my one amp bridge rectifiers. So this is one of those right here. And I'll remind you on a bridge rectifier and these, the function of a bridge rectifier is to convert AC power to DC power. So right here, there's two little squiggly lines next to these two legs indicating those are the AC legs, the AC input side. It's got a plus here for this side, which is the positive leg. And that means that the other leg here is negative. Okay, so I've hooked up clip leads from the DCC booster, uh, providing DCC power to the bridge rectifier. And I've hooked up a red and a green to the plus and the minus outputs, respectively. So let's see what happens now when we hook up our LED to our rectified DC power. And it's still on solid, still no flashing. So for some reason, we're not getting a good clean DC power from the bridge rectifier. So my immediate re reaction was, okay, this has to be related to the DCC power bus waveform. And I'll remind you that with DCC, the power on the rails is constantly going on and off. So it will be on on one rail, off on the other, and then it will flip. And then the other rail, the left rail, will have power and the right rail will be dead. And it keeps doing that back and forth, and that's why we get that alternating waveform, that alter, that what looks like alternating current, although it's a square wave. And so you get this transition period in there where there's essentially no power on either rail because the power goes on on one and it's off on the other, and then it flips on on the other, off on the first. And at that point when it transitions, power goes off. So my immediate thought was, okay, I probably need to add a filter capacitor on here somewhere in order to stabilize the power source for this LED so it would flash. So I fired off an email to uh, my technical advisors, Mark Gurries and Larry Meyer, and asked them what actually was going on with these LEDs. And the response I got back confirmed what I thought, that it was the problem with the transition when there was no power on the rail at all, essentially. And inside of these LEDs, there is a small IC, an integrated circuit chip, and that controls 
the flashing of the LED. And the problem that happens is when the power flips from one rail to the other, you have a fraction of a second in there when the power is absolute zero. And unfortunately, that makes the IC embedded within this flashing LED reset. And it happens so fast that it looks like it's constant on to us, but actually this light is going on and off very, very quickly as the DCC power flips back and forth between one rail and the other. So how do we get around that? Well, as I assumed, I needed to add a, uh, a capacitor to that. So I got into my box of electronic components and dug out this 220 microfarad, 25 volt electrolytic capacitor. And you can see it's got a negative leg right here as indicated by this white stripe with a negative sign on it and then the positive leg over here. So I'm gonna solder this to the output on that bridge rectifier and let's see if that improves the output and gets it flashing. I went over to my workbench and I soldered this 220 microfarad uh, capacitor to the positive and the negative output legs on the bridge rectifier. So you can see that right there. Uh, this makes for a very quick and easy demonstration. I'd clean this up, as I'll show you in a minute, in the final installation. Okay, so now I have the inputs attached to the AC inputs on the bridge rectifier. I've got one of the clip leads attached to the LED. Let's go ahead and hook up the other and see what we get. Now, as you can see, it's flashing. So what is happening here is the output from the bridge rectifier is fairly clean DC, but one of the things that is happening is we're still getting that on-off signal from the DCC system. And it actually can go through the bridge rectifier. But this capacitor here is basically stabilizing that current. So it keeps this guy lit just long enough to get through those off cycles. So that's the secret. In order to get this to flash, you need to rectify your current. You've got to have DC current and you need to add this capacitor. This is 220 microfarad. We'll see for more LEDs, it might take a bigger one. I know that it works with two so far, but we'll see when I get to the full implementation on my lift out bridge, if it's gonna work and provide enough power to keep the integrated circuit in these LEDs operating, even during those momentary periods when there is zero current being supplied by the DCC system. I've got to finish soldering a couple of more LEDs to my uh, lift out bridge, and then I'll show you that and go through the steps on how I put it together so that you can try to duplicate it on your model railroad, however you wish. Let me point out that on my website, I will provide a hand-drawn diagram uh, of this particular circuit, and then, I will include a link to my website in the description for this video. So take a look at the description. Always remember to take a look at the descriptions because I do include information in them like this. Okay, so I've got the lift out bridge pulled out here and I've installed five LEDs. So you can see I've got one, two, three LEDs here on the front side. And this is what will be facing the layout and then I have two on the back side. So a total of five flashing LEDs. I figure that's gonna get everybody's attention. So let's go ahead and turn it on and see how it works. Okay, so you can see they're flashing out of sync. They sometimes get in sync and then go out of sync again. At any rate, I think that anybody approaching that doorway in this bridge is gonna see these flashing LEDs. Now, what I will show you is basically right here at this point, I have taken and installed my bridge rectifier and the capacitor right in here. And those are wired directly to the two rails. So they're picking up DCC power off of the rails 
and then that goes through the bridge rectifier and the capacitor, as I showed you previously, to the first LED. And down in here, there is a, uh, an 810 resistor on each of these LEDs. So we've got this one, and then I have just ran it through. These are wired in parallel. They're not in series. So they're just attached to the wire, and the wire goes right on through. And at this point, I just have it uh, tacked in place using some black tack. And um, eventually, once I'm satisfied with everything, I will go ahead and probably use some epoxy paste to set this in permanently. So then we've got two wires that go on again. There is a resistor right here for this one, and uh, it's blinking away. Then it goes underneath of these rails here to this LED with its resistor, and more wires, another LED with a resistor there, and then finally down here to the end with this one and its resistor and the two wires. So right now what I want to do is I'm going to take the bridge, take it down, install it in its location at the doorway, and we'll see how it works on the model railroad. Okay, here I am at the lift out bridge again in the doorway. You can see we've got this nice array of flashing LEDs to get everybody's attention. And let me tell you, you do notice them now quite easily. And the great thing is I can just lift it up and they stop, drop it back into place, power is reconnected at that point, and we've got the flashing LEDs again. So no direct wiring at all. It's all handled by the power points. No problems. Great. Nice, nice to have this in place finally with all of the connections made without any direct wiring required. So it's great to have this finalized at this point. I don't have to worry about people running into it, hopefully. If they do, it's their own fault at this point. And one thing I, I really, really enjoy, I don't have to disconnect any uh, connectors of any kind at all. I can just lift the bridge up, take it out, set it aside when I don't need it, and then for, for running trains, back to the staging yard, just drop it into place, and the lights come on. It's a great operation, let me tell you. And I just love these power points. They just make it so slick and easy. So that's about all there is. Give these a try with your model railroad. Again, I will put a uh, part number in the description for these at All Electronics, or just look for flashing LEDs at any place that sells components like this. eBay, Amazon, All Electronics, Jane, Jane Co., DigiKey, Mauser, I'm sure that they all offer these flashing LEDs. Well, that's a wrap for today's video on flashing LEDs and how to use them with DCC. So now that I've told you the secret of what is required in order to get these to work with DCC power, I hope you'll find uses for these on your model railroad, because there really are a lot of different ways that you can use them, as I said in the opening. So have a great weekend, have a great week, and come on back next week for another video from the DCC guy. Bye now.